Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series, we're deploying a Django and React application on Render. This is not the first video in the series. In fact, we've already done five before in which we successfully deployed our Django and React application on Render. In this final video, I'm going to show you how you can troubleshoot your deployment if it didn't go the way that you planned. So in our previous videos, we've already deployed all of the services to make sure that our Django and React application is running fine on render. So we have our backend code, our database, and also our React.js code on this render dashboard. And when we go to the backend URL, you can see that we have our API working and that we can actually see the data through our backend code. So this is now working just fine. And in our front end, we actually have different sets of calendars which display these records out of our database. However, I know from this and also from previous deployments that it can be quite tricky. It's very precise and it's quite easy to make a mistake, but quite hard to see what you actually did wrong. So in this video, we're going to be discussing how you can troubleshoot your deployment if something has not gone the way that you expect. We will cover that through three different topics. First, I'm going to show you how you can solve mistakes in your deployment settings. So that means before render has actually indicated that it's a successful deployment. Next, we're going to continue and we're going to discuss errors after a successful deployment, which can be a 400 error for a bad request or a 500 error for an internal server error, because those are the most common errors that you will encounter through your Django application. So let's get started and check how we can solve mistakes in our deployment settings. So for that, I'm going to take an example of our render deploy tutorial Django code, because deploying your Django part of this whole thing is much more tricky than deploying the React.js code. So when we go to the actual page of the Django code, the first thing that you always want to check are the logs because the logs show you detailed information about how your application is performing and what is going wrong or well during the deployment of your code. Now, as an example to show what you will see if things are not going your way, I'm temporarily going to delete my requirements.txt file. So let's delete that file from our repository and then do git add, git commit, dash am and then i'm going to say no requirements.txt file and then we do git push and by saying git push is going to republish my code to render now let's see what we encounter when we check the logging so when we go to the dashboard and in events you can see that a deploy has now started and when i click on this particular deploy it is going to show all of the steps that render takes to build and deploy our code to render now you can straight away see that we encounter an error right here because it clearly states that it could not open our requirements file because there's no such file or directory. And it also specifies in bold red letters here that our build has failed. So this is quite a clear indicator of what is going wrong in this case. So as long as this does not mention that your build is successful and that your deploy is successful, you can always take a look at these logs to see exactly what is stopping your deployment from succeeding. And even if these error messages are sometimes a little bit more cryptic, you can always look for them on Google or Stack Overflow to make sure that you get to the final result. Now we can also have a scenario where your deploy goes successful and everything seems to be going well, but you still made some kind of mistake through which we get an error because we're making a bad request. Now to mimic that, I've added my requirements.txt file back and in our deployment underscore settings file, I've commented out our allowed host to show you what happens when we do something wrong, but the build still goes okay. So again, we're going to do git add and then git commit dash am and then we say no allowed hosts. And then we do git push to see what is happening. And I'll see you in a minute once it has deployed on render. So we now have our deploy ready. And what you can see on top here that the build was successful and also running the start of our application also worked just fine. On the bottom, it gives us a nice message of our services live. But when we check the get statements right here, you can immediately see that we encounter a 400 error, which means that we made a bad request. And also if we click now the backend link right there, you can see that it pops up with bad request 400, but it doesn't provide us with any information of what is going wrong. And also inside of our logs right here, everything seems to be working just fine. 
So how do we now figure out what is going on? Now we can do two things inside of our code to give us a little bit more information about what's going on. So the first thing is that we can temporarily set debug to true. And when our app then encounters an error, it will not show the white page of that request 400, but it's going to be showing all of the details of our application, including the error. It also means that when the user encounters an error, it will show that entire page with all of the things that are going wrong. If you're just deploying this before any user is really using it and you don't know what's going on, you can temporarily set it to true. Just make sure that after you are done, you always set debug to false because you don't want to leak any information from your application to people who don't need to see it. Now the next and the much more safer option with the same end result is by adding something called logging in your deployment settings. Now this code is available inside of my GitHub repository. And if you copy and paste it inside of your deployment settings, you will receive an email to the admins that are listed in your settings every time that something goes wrong inside of your application. And it will show all of the information about the error and your app. Now, of course, there are two things required to make this work. The first thing is that you also need to have a setting for admins which highlights who actually gets that admin email. And you always need to start that with a name right here and then your email address right here, or at least the email addresses of the people that actually need to receive that email. Now, of course, you can also make this an environment variable so that your email address is not exposed in the code. Now, to make sure that you can send emails through logging, you also need to enable sending emails through Django. Now I've set up a configuration right here that enables me to use Gmail to send emails to the admins listed right here. But before this actually will work for you, you need to create a Gmail account, configure a few settings, and then make sure that you have all of the required information in here. Now you can also see that I've added the email host user and the email host password to my environment variables on my render dashboard. So also don't forget that part. On my channel, when you go to videos and you go all the way back to the beginning, you can see that one of my first videos was about sending emails with Django. And in there, I explain in detail how you can configure Gmail and your Django application to send emails. And by using this video in combination with the logging, you should be able to get all of the information you need to debug your application. So what I've done for now is I've re-pushed this code to the Git and GitHub repository with debug on true and also with the logging enabled. And I'm going to show you what this looks like when I go to my application. So we can see that our deploy is live again. And when I now go to the backend URL, you can see that we get all of the details of what is going wrong. So before we would get this white page with a bad request, but now we get more details here. And it says that we have an invalid HTTP host header, and it even suggests that you might want to add render deploy tutorial Django code.onRender to our allowed hosts. Now that exactly describes the issue that we have created for ourselves, because in our deployment settings, you can see that we've commented this out and that it should actually refer to the render external hostname. Now I've also enabled the logging inside of my application. And that means that I've received an email as well with all of the details on what is going on. And here you can see the exact same information as what we saw on the debug is true page, because it also says here, this allowed host, you might want to add this URL to your allowed host. So it essentially provides the same information, but this one might be a little bit safer for you. And that's how you can solve your 400 errors inside of your app. So the last error we want to discuss is a 500 error. And to force that one, I've now set the secret key to none to see what happens when we actually encounter it. So we're now back in our deploy and you can see that this page can no longer handle the request and that we get an HTTP error of 502. Now to solve this, you can actually see that we don't get any real information on this page next to that we have this error. However, you can also go back to your events and then to your deploy, which says that it's live, but there's obviously a mistake. But if we then go to our logs, you will see exactly what is going on again. So you need to read a little bit through the lines right here, because if we go up a little bit 
further and further and further. You can see right here that the secret key setting must not be empty. So again here, these kind of logs can also help you to solve your 500 errors. Now of course, all of this troubleshooting that I've just showed you for your Django backend also goes for your React.js frontend. Because if we go on here, you can also see that we have events where you can check how your deploy is going. So if you encounter any issues with your deployment of your React.js frontend, you can also go to the deploy part and see the logs for that. But it's much more likely that you will encounter problems with your backend since that deployment is simply a lot more tricky. Now, are you still struggling after these dips? Please make sure to check out my GitHub repository and check if you have all of the same settings in my code as you have in yours, or even try to deploy my code first. And if that works correctly, just go and check about what is missing in yours. Now, Render also offers quite good documentation on how to deploy your Django and React applications. So you can always check that. And of course, Stack Overflow, Reddit, and other sites are quite nice to ask your questions to other people who might easily spot the mistake inside of your code. Because I've had that before as well. Once you take a look at your code a little bit too much, you don't see your mistakes anymore. I hope that this will help you all in deploying your Django and React application on render successfully. And that is actually all for this video and this series. In this series, I showed you how you can deploy a Django and React code on render. I want to thank you very much for watching this series. Please let me know in the description what I should be doing next. And I hope to see you in my next videos. Bye bye.